Hi guys, it's been a long journey, but we are finally here. We are in the new apartment and it's time to answer some questions that you all asked me on Instagram, but this will not just be your ordinary sit down Q&A because that would just be so boring and lazy of me. So instead I will be adding some clips that will bring you along on this journey that I've been on of finding a home, buying a home, and then moving into that home from beginning to end. We got a lot of ground to cover, starting with part one of this video, which is pre-moving in. How did you choose your apartment? So some things were non-negotiable to me. You know, I knew what part of Stockholm that I wanted to live in. I knew that I wanted it to be built in the late 1800s to early 1900s. I knew that I wanted to love the floors and things like that. And so the very first time that I stepped foot in this apartment, I just knew. And that's not to say that it was a easy decision to buy. You know, I definitely went back and forth quite a lot. I mean, it is a big, scary decision and I have my doubts for that reason, but I knew that I would regret it if I let it go. And so I went for it. All right, today I'm going on my first listing. Is it called listing? I'm going to look at the first apartment that is um, a potential apartment that I might like. So I'm currently just waiting for the realtor to get back to me. And it sucks just having to wait. I really, really, really want this apartment. So. So have man fått sina nycklar till sin how was the renovation process and was it what you expected? So finding someone you trust to tear up your walls is definitely the most difficult part because if you are unlucky and you hire the wrong people, things can go terribly wrong. So I would say that was definitely the most stressful part during this process. I don't know how many phone calls and emails I had to send during that period of time. Yeah, that was definitely the most emotionally draining. So I really learned something through this process of buying a home and having to be in contact with a lot of different people, everything from the people who renovate to painters to cleaning services. And that is that my, if I could have one superpower, that superpower would be to be able to do everything myself, not needing anyone else for anything. You need to paint the old apartment, congrats, you are a painter. You need to renovate the kitchen, Congrats, you are a sneaker. I don't know if that is in English. A handyman, handywoman. And also, getting ghosted by your contractors is just a different kind of hurt. Like, here we are having this deep conversation about how we are going to turn this space and see the most beautiful home, and then you're just gonna ditch me like that. How is the decor process going? What aesthetics are you into? So it's definitely been a slow process and it continues to be a slow process. I'm very particular with the things that I want, but I've been patient and things are coming together and I'm going secondhand shopping again this weekend, which is honestly where I have found my favorite pieces and it's been incredibly affordable and it just makes this place feel warmer and more homey somehow. 
Good morning. I woke up about 10 minutes ago. I made my cold coffee, which I don't know. I've just started loving cold coffee. But today or right now, I wanted to show you all some of my favorite pieces in this apartment. Mostly the things that I've gotten secondhand because I don't know, they just have a special place in my heart. And also just kind of show you some of the materials that I've chosen for this apartment because the main thing for me really is that I want my space to feel calming and peaceful and of course beautiful and so I'd say the four things that I focused on in order to achieve that is colors I've gone for very very neutral ones which some people find boring I find it calming and natural materials, linen, cotton, woods, and the third thing would be minimalism. Not having very few things at all. I think for me, it's just about anything I bring here, I try to make sure that it is um, things that I will love and appreciate and use or use uh, long term. And the fourth thing would be lighting. So, I don't know, lighting for me is key in a space. I feel like it just sets the entire mood. So maybe I've gotten a few too many lamps, but that's fine. <laughs> anyway, let me show you. All right, so here is my desk, not looking very pretty because I am working. Yes, I put my coffee on my computer. I will regret that one day. Anyway, I want to show you this lamp that I got. Well, all these three things are from secondhand. So they're all really affordable and I think they are really beautiful. I still need to get the, you know, thingy for this lamp. But look at this book. I just think it's really cute. So it's a old, old cookbook. I'm not sure when it's from. I remember looking it up. I don't remember. Um, I just really like this photo. Here are some pots, also secondhand. Love these so much, especially that one I think is my favorite. They're not going to be here forever. I just haven't exactly figured out how to put them, where to put them. And this lamp and her twin sister, she looks like a little mushroom. I got them at an auction actually, which sounds really fancy, but it was really my first time um, bidding at an auction and I won. And let me just tell you how I understand how addicting it can be um, going to auctions because you just get such a rush when you are bidding and then someone else is bidding and you just want to win. But yeah, I won. I got her and her twin sis home and I love them so much. I think they are from the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. And this lamp is maybe my favorite thing. If you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen this one on my story. I just think it's gorgeous and I think it fits perfectly into this apartment. Another thing you've seen if you follow me on Instagram, I'm just plugging away here. Um, I don't know what to do with my books. I want to get shelves, but I also kind of don't want to get shelves. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas. Now let's move on to part two of this video, which is moving in and living here. And this is my favorite part. Do you get lonely being alone? And if so, how do you deal with loneliness? So I got a lot of questions about the loneliness that can come with living alone. So firstly, I want to make it clear that just because I live alone, it doesn't mean that I am always alone. So as you all know, at this point, I share 
very, very little about my personal relationships. So although it might seem like I'm always alone on my Instagram stories, for example, it's just because I don't show the people that I'm with. Now, with that being said, I'm not always with someone either, but I tend to really enjoy my alone time. You know, I don't get bored very often and I don't feel lonely often either. Or actually, let me rephrase that. So to me, loneliness isn't as much about the physical aspect of being or not being with other people, but rather it's more about a mental state of not feeling like my relationships are, you know, let's say going well, but my relationships are not affected by me moving in that regard. So yeah, I'm not sure that made sense. Anyway, now of course, the quiet can be a little bit unsettling sometimes, and I'm sure that there will be times when I feel lonely, but I think that happens regardless of whether or not I live with other people. But I do like having music on or having the TV on just to have some sort of background noise. How are you dealing with seasonal depression while living alone? So I haven't experienced seasonal depression this year and also I would say that what I tend to experience is more of winter blues rather than seasonal depression. Although I don't know, I'm not sure about the difference exactly. However, I would definitely say that this year around, I'm at a much better place mentally than I was at this exact time last year. You know, it's interesting because normally feeling down during this time of the year to me tends to be due to the darkness and the cold, just feeling endless. But this year, what's worried me, I guess, is the feeling that time is just passing by way too fast, which is something that I know that a lot of people have dealt with. You know, yesterday was August, today is December, and tomorrow will be March. You know, at least that's kind of what it feels like. Can you keep up with being disciplined now when nobody is watching you? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, it's rather simple, at least in theory. You know, if I'm not disciplined, I will fall behind with my work and with my health. And if I do that, my well-being and my career will suffer. And if those things suffer, I will not, you know, at the very base, be able to provide for myself. And if all of that happens, I mean, you see where I'm going with this. So really, it's not like there is much of a choice. Now, that does not mean that it's always easy, but I'm not being too hard on myself either. You know, if I feel like sleeping in one day or if I decide to work fewer hours one day, I will allow myself to do that. I just make sure that those things are exceptions and not habits. And now finally, the most frequently asked question, apartment tour, please. For obvious reasons, I mean, I love watching home tours. I don't even care whose it is. I just want to see it. And you know, in the very beginning, I thought that once I get settled, of course, I'm going to want to make a apartment tour. I think it would be a really fun video to make and I think it would be very appreciated and to be transparent, I think it would do really well views wise because those videos tend to perform pretty well. But once I started getting settled, I thought, no, I don't think so. And the reason for that is because my home just feels too private and sacred to me that I don't feel ready to share that with the internet. Um, simple as that. Will that change later on? I don't know. But as for now, I of course don't mind showing its and bits. I've been showing, you know, quite a bit on my Instagram stories. But as for a dedicated tour, at least not right now. 
All right, that was all for this video. I think it was a pretty long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really excited for this new space. It does feel kind of weird still because since the beginning of creating videos, I've been sitting in the pretty much exact same spot for almost every single video. And now all of that is changing. So it's definitely a, an adjustment, but I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comment section.